this is mostly conceptual, just understanding this one graph here that I drew earlier. Energy at the very beginning of this chapter versus distance. Whenever two atoms, yeah, two atoms, and they're flying together to make a bond, they're going to have some repulsion <coughs> because their electrons will get close to each other. And whenever electrons get close to each other, it's a negative, it's a repulsion. Okay, they don't want to be close to each other. So as it comes, as they fly closer and closer, it's going to go higher and higher energy. Okay? It's really high if they're right next to each other because electrons don't want to be close to each other. We, since this is a negative and it doesn't contribute to the bond at all, it actually takes away from the bond, we call this antibonding because it doesn't contribute to the bond. This also, from the concept from chapter 8, is called destructive interference. Same concept. Okay. Now, for also though, when it's flying together at a slightly lower, lower energy, whatever orbitals these two atoms have, will, uh, they favorably, favorably overlap. So whenever orbitals get together, two P's, two S's, an S and a P, D's, whatever they are, you get lower and lower energy as they get closer together because orbitals really like to overlap. So this is orbital energy. It very, very much contributes to the bond. It makes it much lower energy. And so we call this bonding. Or from before, constructive interference. When you add these, and the one I showed you in class is an actual example of an H2 plus atom, you get something that looks like this. Yeah, I drew the dip bigger just so it's easier to see. All right, what you want to, the main concept, and this goes through all, your whole chemistry career, is that low energy is always good. That's the most stable state is low energy. So if an atom, you know, could be any distance, remember this is distance r, could be any distance from each other, it's going to pick the distance that has the lowest energy on the curve. So that's this one right here. So, whatever this R is right there, that is the bond distance, or the bond length. Okay? Now, notice this reaches some asymptote right here as it goes out further and further to infinity. Basically, as they get further and further away, they act as if neither of them exist. So, it reaches this limit. So, this distance from here down that distance is the bond energy. The energy difference between not existing and the lowest energy state. So this is the energy it contains within the bond. The reason this is helpful for the MO diagrams, well, first of all, now you know the concepts better of bond length and bond energy, so that's one helpful part. The other helpful part is every bond has two parts, a bonding part and an antibonding part. So when we draw the pictures that look like this on the MO diagram, and I say there's like a sigma and a sigma star, the sigma is representative of this bottom line. The sigma star is representative of this upper line. Every bond is going to have two parts. Two atoms fly together, two orbitals. They're going to form a sigma part of a bond and a sigma star. Okay? Is that okay? Any questions about that?